water, earth, fire, air. In today's tutorial, we're going to become avatars and become water benders. By the end of this, you'll be a water bending god in Blender. So, like I said, we're going to be creating this very animation right here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button as I post almost daily uploads and tutorials. But with that, let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to do is open up a new Blender scene. And in this new Blender scene, we're going to go ahead and not delete the default cube. We're going to scale it up and bring it up and then hit S, Shift Z to scale it up on all the axes except the Z axis. Then go ahead and hit Control A, apply the scale, go to the Physics tab, add a fluid, and we're going to make this a domain. And we're going to change it to liquid unless you want to be a gas bender. Next, hit Shift A, add a mesh UV sphere, and bring it up and to the right or the left, I should say, on the X axis. Go ahead and scale it down just a little bit and also hit Control A, apply the scale. All right. Now with that selected, we're going to go to fluid and make this a flow and liquid. Leave it to geometry. With the sphere selected, shift S, cursor to selected, and then go ahead and add in a curve, busier curve. Bring it out to the edge of the sphere and then go in edit mode, tab, E to extrude, R to rotate, and G to grab, and draw out a path where you want your water to follow. Now it's important that the segments of the curve are spaced out enough from each other, otherwise the water will jump from segment to segment. Yay, curves! All right, now that you got a path where you want your water to follow, let's go back into object mode, go to the force field, add a force field, and we're going to change it to curve. Now, with the strength, we want to put the strength to zero, and then on frame one, insert a keyframe with the I key on the strength of zero. Put the flow to one. Let's jump to frame 30, and with the strength, let's insert a keyframe there as well, and then go to frame 31, change the strength to negative 10, and insert a keyframe there. All right, we're going to go all the way to frame 103. And with the strength at negative 10, once again, insert a keyframe with the I key. And boom, there we go. Now with the sphere, let's add a particle system. And just here, we're going to show you how the particles are affected by the curve. Let's go turn off the gravity right there so that the gravity doesn't affect it. And boom, look at that. Now in the particle settings, increase the lifetime so that they don't die on us. And now I want to show you what the flow does on the curve. So on the curve, we have an option called flow. You can see that right here. And the higher the number, the more the particles conform to the curve. Here, we're going to put it to 1. And this is the same how it affects the water. So put that to 1, delete the particle system on your sphere, and go ahead and bring back your domain. With the domain selected, make sure that the gravity is turned off. And then under the settings for the fluid, with the gravity, on frame 1, we're going to put the gravity to 0 and insert a keyframe. Then go to frame 130, and with the gravity still set to zero, we're going to insert a keyframe there, because we don't want gravity, otherwise our particles are going to fall. Now just make sure everything's good, click Bake Data on the domain, and make sure that your end frame in the cache is set to 200, and resume the bake. Now with it baked, if we play it, check it out, we got little particles everywhere. Now one issue you can see here when I play it, the curve is too close to each other and it's bringing the particles back down. So here, just if you have that issue, change your curve and bring it up more so that it's more spaced out. All right, now we want the particles to explode. So with the curve selected, go to frame, uh, frame 104 and we're going to change the strength to 10, a positive value of 10. And then insert a keyframe. Then go to frame 108 insert a keyframe with a value of 10, and then on frame 109, we are going to turn it off. So now, and then insert a keyframe with that. And now go ahead and free the data and bake it again, and what this will do is basically the curve is going to be active, it's going to be a negative number, then it's going to be a positive number, and shoot out the particles and then turn off. Check that out. But now we want the particles to go down. So we're going to free the data again, and we're going to animate the gravity. Going to frame 160, we're going to put the gravity to negative 9 and insert a keyframe. And then go ahead and bake the data again. What this will do now is... Yay, and now we're dust benders. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a dust bender. So let's go down here and bake the mesh. Click Bake Mesh. And now we're water benders. And check it out, we got some water bending action here. However, we got a slight issue because there's a little droplet that's kind of staying behind. 
to fix that, let's go ahead and you can see that one right there. Let's go ahead and free the mesh. And now with the curve, you might need to adjust the curve. You could try adjusting the curve or the strength of it. But here I'm just going to move the curve, rotate the first segment, and then go back to the domain and bake that again. And now you can see with just changing the curve a little bit, it's no longer staying behind. And boom, check it out. All right, let's select our original inflow object and go to the data. Go to visibility, uncheck show and render and show and viewport and shade smooth the domain. Now we're going to split the viewport, go to the graph editor, and hit I, insert a location keyframe on frame 1 with the domain selected. Then over here in the graph editor, we're going to hit the N key to bring up the properties, go to the Z location, go to the modifiers, add modifier, and add a noise modifier. Now the noise modifier, if we play it, you can see it's going to give our sphere some vibrating vibrations. Now we're going to restrict the frame range and frame it to frame 30 because we only want it to do that at the beginning. We're going to change the strength to 0.5. And then if we go over here, we could see that it jiggles. Cool. All right. Now we're going to copy it with this button right here and then go to the Y location, paste it, change the phase value a little bit to randomize it, and then go to the X location, paste it as well, change the phase once again. And now we have water jiggling and water bending. Sweet. Two in one in one tutorial. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and collapse the windows. And let's take a look at it one more time. All right, collapse the windows. And over here, we're going to go to the material tab. We're going to add a material to our domain. But first, let's select the light, change the light to a sun lamp and a value of four. And then with the water or domain selected, let's change this to a mix shader. The first one will be a glass shader. And the second one will be a transparent shader. We're going to change the color, or uh, first let's change the factor to a 0.2. And the color, let's make it a light bluish, or you can make it red. It could be wine bending if you want. The IOR will be 1.333, and then change the blend mode to alpha blend, and select screen space refraction. Then over here in the data settings, we're going to change it to screen space reflections. Turn that on and turn on refraction. Back in the material. Let's just make sure everything's good and it seems fine. So now let's add a plane, scale it up and bring it below the water and then bring it up so that the water falls onto the plane. All right, sweet. Now let's go to the background image, add an environment texture, open up an HDRI image if you want to use HDRI lighting and then go to the film and select transparent so that we don't see it. Rotate your sun lamp however you want. And look at this, we got water jiggling and water bending, and it's looking pretty cool. Now, all right, make sure to save your Blender file because crashing is not good. Once you've saved your Blender file, select your original inflow object and select show in viewport and show in renders, and we're gonna go to our domain and free the data. We wanna put the resolution divisions now to 128, and let's go ahead and bake that. Now, with a higher resolution, it's going to look a lot cooler, as you can see here. However, we have one issue where it's now changed kind of the speed of the inflow, or the fluid. You can see that it starts to expand out when the water starts to go back down the curve. So, to fix this, we now have to change the settings or the keyframes of the curve. Now, let's go to the frame where we want the water or the fluid to expand, right about here. And then, let's select the curve. Go to the timeline, Alt A to deselect all the keyframes, B, box select the keyframes that expand the water or the curve strength, and bring those down to this frame. Let's do the same thing on our domain and the gravity keyframes as well. Shift select those and bring those down. Again, unfortunately, it scales down the time a little bit if you increase the resolution, so you just gotta adjust the keyframes and then rebake it. Again, make sure your inflow object is, is still there, and then bake the new, the new domain with the new settings. And once you've done that, check it out. We got an awesome fluid simulation, water bending in Blender. Sweet, let's go ahead and hide this inflow object once again. Select your plane, add a new material. Let's make it black, and then extrude these three vertices up. Make a wall, and then we're going to add a modifier. Sub subdivision surface, shade it smooth, control R, add a loop cut there, another one there, and then we're going to go to the materials, put the roughness all the way up, and the specularity all the way down. And now we got water! How cool is that? Super sweet! 
Now I'm going to adjust the watercolor a little bit and we want to place the camera at a certain angle. Control Alt 0 on your numpad to position the camera. And with that, that is how you water bend and become an avatar in Blender. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out the community at BlenderMania3.com and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Au revoir.